Before we take a look at an actual product card, uh, another thing that's worth mentioning here on the item screen is touching base on these different calculations that we have on the right side of the screen. Firstly, um, I want to mention that default sales price is something that you will define as the selling price on a sales order. So kind of how we have a default purchase price for materials, we also have a default sales price for products. So products are something you sell and you sell at a certain price. So when you make a sales order, that will be the default sales price for that item. The cost here is a bit interesting when you look at it because the calculation for cost is actually derived from your stock. Every product that you have carries a certain amount of materials and operation costs in order to make it. So when you're making a product and defining things such as it bill, its bill of materials or its recipe, uh, as well as its operations or the tasks that are needed to make it, then you have certain costs associated with the operations and certain costs associated with the materials that make the product. Now, when you're buying materials through time and those materials are landing in stock, then once you have the bill of materials figure out, figured out or the recipe figured out for a product, then we will reverse calculate the quantity of those different items that make one unit of product multiplied by its current unit cost value in stock plus its operation cost in order to give you a cost calculation of what would that particular product cost today if I were to make it. So it's quite a lot of complication, uh, quite a lot of complicated calculations going on in the background to get this number. But uh, this number is basically telling you this. If you make this product today, this is how much it should cost. So it's projections. And having projections gives you kind of a clear picture about you know, the future value of your sales. So if you need to make business decisions where you see that on one product, I may be doing 57% margin, but on another product, I may be doing 37% margin, then I have maybe an issue somewhere. Either my price is too low or my costs are too high. And before I go to production on that item, having kind of a clear picture of that projected cost will give me a little bit of insight about how to manage either my manufacturing process where the costs are incurred or the market conditions where I'm selling the product. So it doesn't seem like a lot of information is here, but it brings a lot of value if it's not so easy to recognize in the beginning. And um, again, these are just simple calculations. Your default sales price minus your cost equals your profit. There's a certain margin associated with the difference. And then the production time, which is the operations time multiplied to make one unit of that product. So this information is helpful from that perspective. Now, let's go ahead and hop inside of a product card. And, um, and I'll show you the details there. Prior to doing so, uh, do take note that this items list on the product tab is very similar to the items list on the material tab where you'll see every variant listed, but you also can tell that this is a dining table, this is the color. So this is the product, this is the variant of that product. So um, all four of them are presently listed here, but when I click on one of them, all of them will be available in a single product card. Now that we've gotten into the product card, um, a lot of these things are just repeats of what's existing on the material card with a few notable differences. Um, firstly, the material card only has one tab here, the general info tab, but the product card has the product recipe as well as the operations tab. And in addition to that, uh, the name category and unit of measure are all the same. Configuration part is still the same. Um, Batch tracking, if it applies in your industry, is also the same. When it comes to how you source this product, this is a different element. So you can specify that this is a product that you only make. And if it's a product that you only make, it means that it's only available to be manufactured 
and also added to a sales order. So this item is only available to be added either to a sales order document or a manufacturing order document. If it's a product, if it doesn't, if you check the I buy this product option, then it means that you are making the product available to become uh, visible or created on a purchase order document. So that is the difference. And um, in certain industries, you'll have a combination of the both of them. In my experience working with customers, we have dealt with one, one great example where both of these were turned on is a manufacturing business that was focused on engineering and they were making race car parts. They would create an engineering firm where they would make a prototype of the product. And then when the prototype was created, they would then source it from another manufacturer, buy it from them, and then sell it to their client who they designed it for. And then they would buy it out from another supplier. So as an engineering firm, this is a one way to uh, to make that a reasonable um, way to manage this process. Um, something that you might also have to think about when it comes to your data structure, as we described in the difference of between products and materials in terms of Katana, is that um, if you have a product and that product is something that you buy in and you resell, but you also use in the manufacturing process, it might be confusing that you need it as a material. But truth be said, the best way to manage that is that ask yourself a simple question. Do I ever have to add that item to a sales order? And if you do, then you need to add it into Katana as a product. And so um, in this case, you can buy in the products and then use them um, and also sell them. If the buy section is clicked on, then you have the option to also specify a default supplier if you ever make a PO for that item. And it works very much in the same way as material does, as it does as well support the unit conversion when you're purchasing that item in a different unit from your supplier. I'll turn it off for now to keep things simple, but uh, just as a side note, that when you turn this checkbox on, the same fields become uh, visible that are included for a material purchase. And this would include, for example, the default purchase price. So when it's turned off, the default purchase price doesn't exist. So it's kind of treated in the same way as a, uh, as a material has a relationship with purchase orders whenever the product itself will have a relationship with purchase orders. And then you could set a default purchase price for that product as well in order to give that general default purchase price on a PO when the PO is generated. But we'll keep it off for now and go through some of the additional uh, things on this page that are different from uh, what we have seen previously on the material card. Variant configurator is there. Variant SKU we've already covered. Default sales price we briefly covered on the items tab up here with the pro oh, sorry on the item screen with the products tab uh, the default sales price is the price that by default gets added to a sales order when you put that item in a sales order and then we have ingredients cost and operations cost now we can get a little bit more detailed now uh, with each of these ingredients costs and operations cost breakdown on the item screen when you see the cost here we can take a simple example like uh, the dining table beige, which has a cost of 714.60. This 714.60 is a combination of its ingredients plus operations. So if we're going to look at the um, beige dining table line here, beige dining table, then we have the combination of 554.6 in the ingredients costing, and then 160 US dollars in the operations cost. So this is my, my labor and uh, task operations uh, completion. Anything that goes into the operations gets tallied here in the costing. Uh, the one that's variable, the variable cost here is the ingredients. And um, when looking at the ingredients, uh, we can see through this info icon, the inventory Intel that contributes to that value of cost. 
So how do we determine cost in Katana? We use something called moving average cost. And that moving average cost is a, um, is a combined value of the cost of all the materials for that, for uh, the cost of all the materials that make this particular product. And so the dining room table in this case is presently uh, made up of wood and paint. And those are the breakdowns of each individual component from its current stock value. And the operations cost is determined on the production operations tab, uh, as well as the in-stock quantities for the product. You can see here, for example, we only have the brown one in stock, and that stock is available um, across a single location. So here's your in-stock amount. And that's a general overview of the product tab. And um, we'll go ahead and cover the product recipe in BOM, as well as the production operations tab as well.